he is a staple on CBS News. And for David Begno, it's what he always wanted to do, tell the important stories that need to be told. Well, our One Caribbean News, Francis Felix, recently caught up with the journalist and talked about his love of Puerto Rico. A hero without a cape, David Beckman has become an important figure among the Puerto Ricans. After first being assigned in 2017 to cover the pass of Hurricane Maria when it hit Puerto Rico, the national lead correspondent David Begnard has returned to the island to continue his work on covering important stories for Puerto Rico. Begnard started his journalism career right after high school in a local station in his home state of Louisiana, a passion that he had since he was a kid. So Francis, um... I've never wanted to do anything other than what I'm doing, right? And I don't know how many people can say that. How many people are saying they're doing what they've always wanted to do? Uh, for me, I started watching the news when I was six years old, and my parents used to use it as a punishment tool. So if I wasn't behaving, they would say, you can't watch the news tonight. <laughs> and so that's how much I loved it, and I continue to love it. But for me, as I've gotten older... For me, journalism is a public service, mm -hmm. and so I'm most excited when I'm telling the stories that are either making people's lives better or are helping people see something of themselves in the characters whose stories we're telling. The journalist told us about his special connection with the island. People have always said to me, David, why do you love Puerto Rico so much? Like, what is it? You know, you're not Puerto Rican. You had never been here before the hurricane. And I think what it is, Francis, is I'm Cajun, and in South Louisiana, Cajuns are uh, excitable, we're loud, we're proud, we will cook and invite you in, we will allow you to stay at our house, and that's the Puerto Rican spirit. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think that's where I at least feel a rhythm with people who are Puerto Rican and just the Puerto Rican culture. He realized the impact of the works he does for the Puerto Rican community. I don't see myself as a hero. I see myself as someone who has a platform to be able to use it to do good. So for me, when I never meet a Puerto Rican who asks me for an autograph, they want to give me a hug. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. that means is there's a responsibility to the work that we do. And so I take the platform very seriously. And for me, uh, it's humbling when people come up and, and just express gratitude because I feel the same amount of gratitude for them trusting me to tell their story, right? But I'm only one of the storytellers. I mean, there are incredible storytellers on the island, like yourself and others, who do the work day in and day out. I think of myself as someone who can supplement and add to that reporting because what I've come to realize is the millions of Puerto Ricans on the mainland have a real impact on changing things mm -hmm. to the benefit of the island. And so the folks on the mainland need to know what's happening on the island. It's not just nice to talk about it. They need to know because there are some powerful Puerto Rican people living on the mainland who can make a difference. When David was a child, he was diagnosed with Tourette syndrome, which now he sees has an opportunity to set an example for others with the condition. So it's not that I couldn't talk about it. Everybody knew because they could see. But it was, it was embarrassing. It was humiliating. So as I've gotten older, the ticks have become less and less. But the opportunity to have kids with Tourette syndrome see me in the position that I'm in and say to themselves, if he can do that, then maybe I can do this. That's the power. That's why I have no problems talking about it. There's no shame in talking about it. Mm -hmm. Because I want people to look at me and say, I can be like him in whatever I want to do, whatever dream I have to fulfill. David considers now a son of Puerto Rico. Using his extensive media platform, he keeps Puerto Ricans both in the island and on the mainland in form of important matters in Puerto Rico. A word or phrase to describe Puerto Rico. A joy-filled place. A joy-filled place. Reporting from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Frances Felix. The Caribbean Public Health Agency has announced new support for health care in the Caribbean region. A One Caribbean News' DeAndre Hamilton tells us more. The Caribbean Public Health Agency has attracted new support for health care in the region. 
the French Development Agency in coordination with the Belgian Development Agency and Enable are on board with three projects. Also benefiting will be African and Pacific states to the tune of 15.4 million euros. The European Union funded program will support connectivity and digital solutions in health, education and businesses and libraries without borders in CARFA will facilitate. At the launch last week, European Union representative Dr. Louis Meyer outlined the greater goal. European Union's vision for of digital development is one of implementing concrete policy to bridge the digital divide by supporting projects for key sectors in ACP countries. CARFA has been granted 900,000 euros. Executive Director Dr. Joy Singh John talked about the targets. Fulfill many levels of goals. There is the global goal, the UN Sustainable Development Goal 3, Target 3D, which specifically states strengthen the capacity of all countries for early warning, risk reduction, and management of national and global health risks. Other goals include strengthening capacity and surveillance for better data collection, analysis, and reporting, and using strategic information to address public health priorities. Executive Director of the Caribbean Export Development Agency, Diodat Maharaj, said the initiative responds to the problems businesses are facing. This novel initiative responds precisely to the challenges that businesses are facing here in Guyana, where I am, in Barbados, where I am based, and in, indeed across the Caribbean. So I really want to congratulate the colleagues at Caribbean Export. DeAndre Hamilton reporting. Well, if you are planning a summer vacation, listen up. Delta Airlines says it's looking to cut about 100 flights a day from its schedule. The reason? Delta says to, quote, minimize disruptions and bounce back faster when challenges occur, end quote. The cuts will happen between July 1st and August 7th, mostly in the U.S. and Latin America. The announcement comes as the company says it's battling everything from weather and air traffic control issues to problems with vendor staffing and employees getting COVID-19. JetBlue also trimming its summer schedule with plans to cut up to 10% of its flights and Alaska Airlines reducing its schedule by about 2% through June. Well, on this Memorial Day, we're reflecting on those who have given their lives fighting for their country. And today, our Jameson Hixenbaugh caught up with our One Caribbean News weatherman, Joey Stevens, as he reflects on a fallen friend. Longtime weatherman Joey Stevens of Lilly Broadcasting approached the wall that heals with one person on his mind. It's really kind of an emotional thing, you know. You see all these names. In 1967, Joey's close friend Michael Heitker joined the Marine Corps. This particular gentleman, Mike Heitzer, was a dear friend. He and I played football together for four years in high school. He was my center. I was a quarterback. A year later, at the age of 19, Heitker was killed in Vietnam. I remember in 1968, that's when he was killed, learning that he had... He had died. It was, it was very, very emotional. In 1971, Joey thought he might be drafted as well. Uh, at the end of uh, my college career, I got the letter in the mail saying we'd like you to go to Buffalo and take your physical. And uh, I thought, oh boy, here we go. I'd just gotten engaged and was ready to get on with my life. But that year, the Selective Service System announced that no one with a lottery number above 125 would be drafted. Joey's number, 166. I often wondered what my life would have been like. It, it could have been completely different. I could have gone over to Vietnam like Mike and uh, other friends and maybe never came back. While he's gone, Joey says his friend Mike will not be forgotten. Until you actually know somebody, whether it's a, a, a family member or a, a, a friend, a classmate, it takes on a whole different significance. I mean, that's a real person. Kind of interesting. It's raining here this morning. Tears from heaven. Yeah, tears from heaven. From the wall that heals, Jameson Hickson. Hey, thanks to Joey for sharing his story. And uh, uh, happy Memorial Day to everybody who has served.